So finally, Ulysses and Toraj have spoken uh, just about an hour or so ago. Ulysses and Toraj have been very clear to Chelsea and then they've told him exactly what the boy wants. The terms and conditions, why he's, he'll probably choose Chelsea Football Club. And again, I've said this, I've told you that there are a lot of things that are hinging the Ulysses conversation. You know? It isn't just about the player and every other thing that's going on with it. There are a lot of details that's a hinging Michael Olisi and it's possibly coming to Chelsea and they are deep-seated stuff. In there, he uh, emulates a lot of the things that he would want to do before he moves um, to Chelsea Football Club. He's also very clear, I mean, as entourage, you know, they are also very, very clear on exactly the ideals of Michael Olisi, how he wants to play under Enzo Maresca. And they feel that Chelsea should let them know what their plans are before they get a job done. So uh, it's more like Chelsea have struck again. They've gone a step further with Michael Olisi. They've been very, very clear with the entourage, you know, what they can do for Michael Olisi. But what is clear is that Michael Olisi has decided to choose Chelsea over Manchester United. That is one thing that is clear. Michael Olisi um, has been clear with all the, all both of the parties, say he wants Chelsea ahead of Manchester United. So it isn't just because he, yeah, now he wants to go anywhere. No, Michael Olisa has been clear, said now he wants Chelsea over Manchester United in there. And then it's a big one for Tima, your friend at Chelsea. They are clear with him. Michael Olisi and of course, Chelsea Football Club have been clear in the conversation for has who, how he's going to get there as their new player, what he wants to be done for him as the new Chelsea player, how he wants the deal to be done. Now, he obviously through his entourage contacted Chelsea and on here very clear. So okay, fine. We want the Chelsea deal. And in that Chelsea deal, no, a whole year per year, year per Chelsea deal ahead of Manchester United. Again, this morning, I was explaining to you that for Manchester United, it is always going to be a little bit difficult to convince players to come unless this uncertainty around our managers now is sorted out. If Manchester United are not able to sort out some issues with managers, whether it's hag Beko, whether someone call. What are the real issues with Eric Hagen and Sani Mana? It will be difficult to really convince a player to choose Manchester United over any club in Europe. And that's exactly what is happening to Michael Olise. Olise, if he said, yes, if he's leaving Crystal Palace, it has to be a team that can compete. Yes, Chelsea is playing the Conference League, United will play in the Europa League. Both of them as lower tiers in terms as compared to the Champions League. But they feel that Chelsea were ambition. Mauricio Pochettino called and Enzo, Enzo Maresca has come in as a new manager. Now, it looks as if there is a clear path to Chelsea. The young person, young, young, they have a coach in, they have a plan for the coach, they have the players that they want to go and buy, and they've been clear, some person will be here by the 30th of June, so that by the time all of these things are done, they can go in with preseason and then finalize everything. And that's the main reason in Tia Branti, friend Michael Lewis, he chose Chelsea over Manchester United. And, if you've forgotten Olise's story, my man Kyle Kakra, Michael Olise last season, Chelsea were this close to almost signing Michael Olise. In fact, only we will be here with Michael Olise. The problem I buy in the when Joe Shields, Mo, any Wayne Stanley, any um, 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 Shields, Wayne Stanley, and then Stewart, Omo we are going with Michael Olise. They contacted Olise's family and then the boy first without letting Crystal Palace know. So the first move I chose for you this time, they said, we will go back to Crypto Palace. We will let them understand. Say we have plans to get Michael Olisi full time this, this this summer. Now, once Crypto Palace give us the go ahead to go and speak with the player, then we can go back and speak to the player and his entourage. And of course, Manchester United also had plans for Michael Olisi, but Olisi has I told them say he wants to go ahead with the negotiations with Chelsea unless something really dramatic or substantial happens with Manchester United and Omo coach. You know, that is when anything is going to happen over there. Makacho said last season. Michael Olisi was going to go for a relatively cheap fee, about 35 million pounds in the English Premier League. Name. When Steve Parrish ran, I said, it's the money, a big, a big indictment on the club. He quickly went behind it, forced them, said, and come on your discussions, and then when you Chelsea in the corner, and Chelsea pulled out of the deal, Chelsea could not finalize that deal, and Chelsea went away. This time, it is going to go to an excess of 70 million pounds for a rental, my friend Michael Lewis. And my can ha say Chelsea nya to Michael Lewis on to Julian Alvarez. So to Julian Alvarez on to Michael Lewis. So to Chelsea nya fashion dream. So these are some of the things that is going to decide who comes in, who goes out, who is the guy, who is not the guy. I gave you an update 
um, about Benjamin Sesco said, Chelsea have sent in a proposal to Benjamin Sesco. His entourage also are having a good look at Chelsea's proposal. Mind you, and yet Chelsea in quantity he proposed the Lava Coma Benjamin Sesco. No, it isn't just Chelsea. There are about three different clubs. Um, Chelsea can want three. And all of them will propose the Lava team and um, play a friend of Benjamin Sesco. And then the plan is simple. Only you have a Benjamin Sesco. All of them know that Sesco is an important player for the future. So, open a physical draw monster power with any eighty space or what the legs to run the channels very well. Hold that player very good. Very good ball striking ability. Also have the height and physicality to deal with things that. Then Benjamin Sesco is the guy that we are talking about. And he has experience in the Champions League. Play against all the big games at Anfield against Liverpool before. He has done it at RB Leipzig in the um, German Bundesliga. And everybody knows that Benjamin Sesco is hey, a top draw player. It, all of these teams are going to Benjamin Sesco to discuss with him. Say, hey, we want you to come and play for us. We believe say, you are the guy to take us to the next level. Chelsea have sent in their proposal. Arsenal and so don't propose our call. Manchester United has a proposal in place for Benjamin Sesco. All of these clubs are pushing for a brand for the Benjamin Sesco. I think that for Manchester United, that deal will not happen. Not because of the uncertainty around Eric Tehag, but because the Manchester United already have a young and proven striker in Rasmus Hoyland. Rasmus Hoyland, who is, I mean, almost in the same frame, almost in the same um, quality, the same ability. Of our brand FN Benjamin Sesco, and I doubt say Manchester United are going to bring in uh, Benjamin Sesco um, whilst they still have Rasmus Hoyland on their ranch or on Witty. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that Manchester United will go in for if you buy a striker this summer, it's going to be a much more proven striker this summer in there for them. So, City, there's a lot of Manchester United news um, in this episode of Fifi Man Fidelity. If you just join us, uh, make sure say you enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel and then turn on notification. Subscribe and turn on notification. Subscribe and turn on notification. It's imperative that you subscribe and you turn on notification over there on Fifi Manfredo YouTube. Now, one week ago, Thomas Tuchel flew to Monaco. In fact, Thomas was in India for the holidays. And he decided, he said, oh, he would want to go to Monaco to go and see the place because after leaving Paris uh, for a while now, no, France has been a place that he hasn't really gone. Until he decided to go back to Monaco for holiday. Now, of course, no, not Manchester United for not contacting about the Manchester United job and the issues around Eric Ten Hag. And I'll pay me briefly. You say Eric Ten Hag is still being discussed at Manchester United, and this weekend is a crunch weekend. Nejumano and yet totally see the Bemano. Um, Louis Van Gaal was saying it earlier today. He said, Oh, Manchester United for only um, Eric Tahag, I hear Jumano. It's in common to a normal fan. Um, the other side of the people are saying, No, he hasn't been good enough. It's in Jan or Manenko. Then we can move on and bring in a proper manager. There are a lot of the people who also believe that Manchester United are not respecting Eric Tahag enough. It's in normal yelling and it's not good enough for the coach. They should respect him because he has won two trophies for the club, won the League Cup, won the uh, FA Cup this season, even under very bizarre and difficult circumstances. With respect to injuries, no, I had to get Tommy Yamano. But Thomas Tuchel went to meet Serge Mratkin. Now, two things happen. This is the detail you don't get anywhere but on half of 50 man for the YouTube. First thing he's seen is uh, Thomas Tuchel, who could share Serge Mratkin, no need to drink common. What he picked up from Thomas Tuchel, he said, he wants proven experienced players. He wants to compete. And uh, Tuchel is not ready to wait for, okay, we'll do a sporting project where this season you're better to see your best selling players. You may know. And Tuka went in there and he okay, he said, Sir United players that they are struggling to get on form, no more struggle. He, he has done it before. When he went to Chelsea, Antonio Rudiger was on very bad form. Mason Mount wasn't really enjoying football. He turned them around. He turned them into a team that lacked confidence to a team that believed and went on to win the Champions League. He essentially told them about his CV, told them how he was able to do that job at Chelsea. And why he thinks that uh, United and German company should not get ding as compared to Chelsea's job, and then he can do it. Now, there was a place where the two people could not agree. It is watching in the media. A lot of the pro Manchester United fans or um, journalists or media people, like I said, oh, Manchester United could not agree with Thomas Tuchel. And then the English media, not so about like I said, then the foreign media says, oh, Thomas Tuchel says that he doesn't want to take the Manchester United job. He wants to finish his holiday. The thing is that they did not agree on the transfer strategy at Manchester United. Both people, the Indians group, any Thomas Tuchel has decide, have decided to go their separate ways. 
Thomas is going to focus and then go on his holiday until a properly written substantial transfer plan, a fitting or money plan comes in. Or you go through with assistance that's low and the other guys before you accept it. Whilst Manchester United believes that they need to do further and better interviews with other managers and evaluate their options before they make any conclusion. So it is going to go on for the rest of the days. You will hear things in there and it's very, very important that we will get those, those things clear. Chelsea are getting very, very close to selling a brand to a friend, Armando Bruyer. Armando Bruyer, um, very good center back for player where perhaps Chelsea Timinias are 30 million now. Everton for evaluating and that's a good one. Now, the little issue with Armando Bruyer going to Everton and they said they already have Dominic Carvin Lewin. They also have Beto as all centre forwards in their team, all in the frame of Abrante FN and Armando Bruyer. And I don't know how they are going to get this deal done. Are they going to sell Dominic Carvin Lewin? Are they going to let Beto go? Are they going to fight Bright McNeil more? All of these guys are more forward thinking players, on your central base center forwards. Now, how are they going to manage them, or they are just going to lump sum them together? What does Sondai want to do? And I know they had a little confusion, but if Chelsea get 30 million for Amando Bruya, then it means that that's a good, 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 good business. And at Chelsea, I all honor it. That's it. Jaden Sancho, Manchester United are looking at selling him somewhere around 30 million. I saw somebody saying that Jaden Sancho will fit Chelsea left hand side. Now, see. Chelsea have to stay away from Jaden Sancho, allow him to go to a much more settled club. Chelsea doesn't have the luxury of time, the luxury of PR, the luxury of every other thing to deal with the off the field issues of a branch of Fanny Jaden Sancho. And the amount of Manchester United for honestly, Omo Peno, yes, it is good money, but it is not an amount of money where Chelsea would want to spend. And finally, FC Bayern Munich, Bayern Munich over there have finalized the deal and they've done a personal agreement with Jao Palinha. Makacho. When Chelsea wanted a space eater, a very, very athletic midfielder, oh, if you will DM to do the job, Jao Polina was one of the guys, one of the most interceptions in the English Premier League last season. Very experienced with Fulham two seasons. And then uh, Abrantia, uh, your friend, um, Vincent Company has agreed to let Jao Polina be part of this team in there. And then Jao Polina is going to move on and become an FC by mission player. That means it gives an opportunity to play with Joshua Kimmich in the middle of the pack. But then having Jean Polina sitting at the base to occupy space for him, the job that Abrante Leon Goreska couldn't really do perfectly, the job that Conrad Lima could only really do to an extent, he has it. And then it gives a future to Abrante Fenn Pavlovich. How is he going to deploy Pavlovich? Is it in as an extra eight in a midfield three? How is Abrante Fenn Vincent Company going to deploy that midfield of FC Bayern Munich, especially with Jean Polina coming in, which is very, very important. Of course, the rest of the players are there. It's an important buying side. We'll to see how the transfer window goes. I think that for now, these are the updates SMD Mao when it comes to transfers assistance now. Chelsea are getting close.